that the native had here in North America uh, once the Europeans arrived were as uh, guides and interpreters. Uh, they knew the area, like where they were going. Uh, there were no maps, no roads or anything like that. So when the Europeans arrived, it was a true like wilderness frontier and the natives were the only ones that kind of knew where certain resources were. Um, because they've lived here for thousands and thousands of years. With these resources being mentioned, um, the Europeans saw that the natives were great hunters and they had surpluses of hides and furs. Um, the difference between a hide and a fur is, a hide is going to be a tan piece of leather with the hair removed and the flesh removed from that hide. That would be leather for like belts, shoes, jackets, hats, things like this. A fur, is going to have the flesh removed and be tanned on one side and then it's going to have the hair left for warmth or appeal purposes pretty looking hides and furs and stuff like that for jackets and coats also um, deer skins also called buck skins were the the main export the trade with the natives uh, the natives were getting glass beads uh, silver jewelry, uh, very, very shiny items that were otherwise in a mute environment in the woods. It's brown and green stuff, basically. So uh, natives were getting very fancy, colorful shirts like what I'm wearing. Native offered the hides and the meats in many cases uh, to the Europeans. And uh, that is how that trading commodity kind of came about. They get axes and knives, of course, for living in the wilderness and also muskets, rifles, along with the powder and the shot that went along with those. The tools that are gonna be used to remove a hide from any animal would start with your very basic, back to you know your better knives in the day were flint napped knives. Like I've got one here, that's a piece of agatized coral, nice little knife blade on there and a little antler handle. So it's very comfortable and you can put a lot of, lot of use on that with that handle. Another thing that's a nice little delicate tool for skinning animals and removing like meat from the hide is just a flake tool. That just took one second to make. Every man, woman, and child that was doing any work like this would be able to make their own little flake blades and then butcher and process these animals and go all the ways through with the tanned hide or fur. The tanning process prehistorically all over the world involved usually brains, urine, or um, tannins like uh, bark. Uh, a lot of oak bark has very strong tannins. It'll turn it really, really dark like a tea or a coffee colored water. And that hide, once the hair and the flesh and all that had been removed from there, that would just be basically soaked in there and given a light acid bath. Um, and that would tan the hide. This would be a stiffer leather that was suitable for like belts and boots and like heavier use bags. Um, another type of tanning that was very popular um, was called brain tanning. That's where you actually use the oils from the brain of the animal or you would use like some kidney fat or tallow and once you had the hair and the flesh removed from this hide that would be soaked in that brain that fatty water solution um, some places have even used egg yolks um, but that would that hide would soak up those nice little oils there and get all bonded into that fiber in the hide and then as this hide would dry out it would be totally manipulated and stretched and worked like every different direction that you could think of until it had dried soft. Um, once that hide had dried, it would maintain this natural, soft, stretchy feel that like only brain can can really get you.